Why are you still making excuses for me? If you don't forgive others of their past sins, then you can't be forgiven. Have you asked yourself once, one time, what's best for us? For him? For your grandson? This ain't about him. It's about mom. What we do? What we do? I'm wondering, Titus, if you can talk to us kind of about the origin story. I know there's a lot of vulnerability here for everyone in kind of bringing this project together and, and how we all came to be here tonight. This film started because I wanted to figure out how to talk to my sons about how different their father's life was from theirs. My kids were really regularly asking me to tell them more and tell them more, and I just didn't feel like it was time. But uh, my oldest son is 17 now, and he's going off to college next year, and it felt like it's time. I started writing, and I wasn't initially really trying to write a script. Initially, I wanted to just say something to my boys. And so I would wake up in the morning, and I would start writing, and take, write for about two hours, get up at five, write for two hours, and take my boys to school, and then go to my studio, and I would paint. And I have this app on my phone that allows me to listen to what I have written that day. So I would be listening to it while I was making sketches. And so by the time I was done, I had this text and this body of paintings. And I started to share it, and that's when I realized it, was, it had the potential to, to be more. The vibe is like right people, right time. It, it, at least my impression. I was just wondering if you could all talk a little bit about that and kind of finding all of each other for this particular project. I was lucky enough to um, meet with Titus. We chatted for a while, and we just hit it off, you know? Of course, I'd known his work, but, um, but then I saw this TED Talk that he did. You should Google that, because it's fantastic. And I also saw the short that he did, which was shortlisted last year for an Oscar, called Shut Up and Paint. Mm -hmm. And it was documentary, but it was also live action. It was, you could just tell this guy was something special. And we just wrapped ourselves around Titus. We just wanted to know what he wanted to do, and, and we just tried to help him as much as possible. Nice. Mr. Holland, when did, when did this material find you? Two years ago, a year and a half ago. Something like that. It's really fast. Huh? Yeah, it moved really fast. We have a mutual friend in Terrell McCraney who wrote Moonlight. Mm -hmm. And yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, Terrell reached out and told me that he had read this script and had been talking to Titus about it. And he connected us. We talked one time, hit it off. It ended up being like a very, very, very long phone call in which we mm -hmm. talked about our families, our, you know, our artistic practices, all sorts of things. And I knew pretty much right away that I, I wanted to do it if, if they wanted to have me. Mr. Jokes, how about you? Um, I auditioned for it and put myself on tape and sent it in. <laughs> and I, I think he liked what he saw. <laughs> Stop playing. <laughs> yeah, um, and the, the coolest thing about it is that um, we had a conversation, Titus and I. He, he called me and we had a, um, a Zoom call. And what was really cool is that he started off by asking me about what I thought about the script. And I said, wow, man, this script is great. It, it, it jumps off the page, and I, I love the characters. The only thing that's missing is me. <laughs> and he started laughing, like, oh, OK, man, I mean, but what do you think? You know what I mean? And um, the cool thing is that he came to uh, Chicago, and we worked on a few of the, the monologues and some of the scenes. And he taped it and uh, went back, and um, he convinced everybody in that room to say that this is the guy he wanted. And I'm glad he did. I mean, he fought for me. and. And I'm here, and I'm really happy to be a part of it. Yeah. So yeah. thank you, man, once again. Yes, yes, yes. Ms. Day, how about you? I got the script through a very traditional way. My agent sent it to me. I was intrigued when I first uh, saw the script um, because it had the name Titus Kafar. I was actually a huge fan of his painting probably years prior through the series that you did called Enough About You. And um, so I just was, I was super intrigued by that alone. <laughs> I was actually, I like to say that I was committed before I even read the script and then I was just hoping the words inside the pages were good because I was like, oh no, I said yes. So, um, <laughs> but I think I knew when reading the script that this was very, very personal. But I also liked that it was also a universal message. And so I was committed to it because I was just like, whatever this is, is gonna be amazing because everything he touches is amazing and I wanna be a part of it. Is there something kind of specifically 
excellent, a little leading question, but about Everything. working with him kind of in, in, his, in his first sort of experience of him kind of doing a feature and, and having it be so personal. Is there something particularly... Well, I, I'll just say that, you know, Titus is used to working alone. He doesn't really need anybody. So um, the idea of him working with 100 people to create something, I, I was thinking, ooh, this is going to be different. But Titus approached everything with such curiosity and mm -hmm. humility and just, just eager to, to find out what he didn't know. There, there was just no fear. It was mm -hmm. just very open, right? And that's so, so rare, especially with a first timer who wants to prove what they know and how they can do it. And there's like a little chip. There was no chip. Yeah. It was just pure artistic exploration. That's how it felt. Forgiveness as a subject is pretty weighty. It's, it's treated so beautifully in this film. I'm wondering if your thoughts about forgiveness have evolved at all from start to now, if, if it's changed in, in your experiencing this work, or if you approach the subject in any new way, or just appreciate how it's addressed in this piece. This piece made me rethink the idea of forgiveness altogether. Yeah. It was the process of writing that changed it for me. Um, I've said this before, but if you had asked me as a young man, I would have told you that my father is the villain of my narrative. But um, when you sit down to write a character, it, you have to be honest about what motivates that character. Why are you doing what you're doing? As a young man, I never asked that about my father. I never saw the whole context of why he was moving into the spaces and why the things were happening that were happening. Having to write him as a character made me have compassion for him I never had before. And at the same time, I recognized that there was, there was this thing that we do where we conflate forgiveness and reconciliation, and those two words are not synonyms. And so forgiveness, it, I came to realize through the process of writing that forgiveness, um, for me, the kind of forgiveness I'm talking about is the kind of forgiveness that says, I can, I can let go of this. I don't have to carry this burden anymore. There's a debt here, but you don't owe it to me anymore. You're free from that. And that might mean that, uh, that I'm going on my journey this way and you're going on your journey that way, but just know you don't owe me anything anymore. Um, that's the kind of forgiveness that I think this film explores. Um, sometimes forgiveness and reconciliation can be together, but sometimes you're forgiving somebody who's already, who's already passed. Is there anything you're especially proud or surprised by with the reception so far to the film? The thing that has been surprising to me is, like I said, this is not a documentary. Uh, you know, the wife character is very different from, from my wife. My mother is very much alive. It's my grandmother that passed. They were both pushing me um, to forgive. but but it's deeply personal. And so I was not trying to make something that I felt was gonna be right for everybody. Mm -hmm. As a painter, we don't ask ourselves that question. We don't ask ourselves, who's the audience? And so it was weird for me to go into film and hear that question first, who's the audience? Oh. I, I'm, I'm the audience. <laughs> so so, so when, I, when we put this in theaters and Sundance and the places we've screened it, people from all walks of life, races, cultures, whatever, are coming up to me and going, that's my father too. Mm. That's my mother. That's my, that has been the most surprising thing. Mm. I was just trying to make something honest and vulnerable, and it turns out through the power of what these folks did, we were able to connect to something significantly bigger. Mm. Well, I thank you all so thank much you. for sitting around and being so receptive. Thank you to these wonderful artists. Thank you.